Championship in Bochum. Uh, my name is David Hochmann, joined by Martin Wagner. And because of uh, we are starting very early today, um, it's <laughs> in Germany, it's uh, 9.20 at the moment. Um, we are jumping directly into round one. I think currently there are not so many viewers, but everyone who <laughs> found the stream so fast, um, thank you very much. And we are going to stream uh, Pedro Torres against uh, Alessandro Cremasoli. I can actually see them from here. Yeah. So um, that's a really nice. I don't know the decks, I w but I would. <laughs> I, would I would probably assume it's some kind of stall yeah. since it's <laughs> Alessandro, and you know Pedro, he's always bringing something that that he's comfortable with, yeah. something that is like staple in the meta, and that's really good. So. Yeah, I think he, he's brought a really good deck today yeah. as well. So, so the um, last stream we had was in Cologne. Yes. Cologne was the biggest regional championship we had in Europe so far. That's and true. from what I heard that Bofum actually broke that number. So yes. here we are again at the biggest regional championship in Europe. Um, so if, great. You, if you combine VG and TCG, yeah. um, I think because of Sword and Shield, there are a lot more people interested in video game right now. So their numbers are looking very good. I am uh, so happy oh yeah. for them. But yeah. the TCG numbers are pretty nice as well. I don't have the, um, the proper number here at the moment and the round number. So before I say something that's not completely uh, true, we will uh, look it up and then let everyone know in the chat. I know there's at least like 400 masters in yes, VG, so like that's absolutely enormous, yeah. like compared to what uh, what the usual attendance numbers are. So we can be really happy about that, and also like TCG as always, people still love to play it. Still, like the sun and uh, sun and moon block is coming to to an end uh, soon. So yeah, this is one of the last tournaments in the. Um, Sun and Moon format before yeah. Sword and Shield becomes legal and yeah, people still want to play, still are really hyped about the cards that are going to be new, but they yeah, want to still enjoy the old format once more. Yeah, so I don't know if everyone of you knows, but um, there has been an article on Pokemon.com recently um, explaining some rule changes. Uh, if you haven't read that, it's something everyone should know. The most important thing is that with the new expansion, well, it's not legal, but now it's not released yet, um, but there will be some rule changes, some yes. minor changes to card design and such. Um, yeah, yeah so I think like the the most important one is that you can't like after the sword and shield set will be legal, you can't play a supporter on your yes. first turn anymore, which will shake up the game a lot. But I think it's like changes are always. Like you have to try out some changes first and see uh, see how it works out, and I think it's fine to mix things up a little bit and try to balance the game. So, yeah, yeah. and maybe we'll have time later to talk about the uh, the article, the newest things that will come to the game soon. But yeah, let's hope that we have maybe. Uh, I actually hope we don't have a lot of time during breaks because this means no one got dogs yeah. or something. <laughs> um, but it might also mean if we don't have breaks that we put a little bit too much stall on the stream. Uh, let's. Uh, see about that but um, this is not the last regional with the old rules and the sun and moon format but um, probably the last one we will stream together yes so let's uh, all try and enjoy this um, there's also if you don't know this yet um, a lot of the American regionals are going to be streamed officially by um, the Pokemon Company International so if you're interested in um, their events as well, so they play Expanded right now, which is not really a thing in Europe. Yeah, unfortunately we don't have a lot of Expanded events here. Yeah, so you should definitely look into that. They, are, they have very nice streams as well. Um, but yeah, so we are going to start round one as soon as the players are ready. Like I said, I can actually uh, see them from yeah, here. They're so when you see me looking up, up I'm <laughs> looking at Alessandro right now. And um, yeah, so they are setting up, and we still don't know the decks. But this tournament we will is know soon. Yeah, so. this tournament is actually using RK9 Labs for the people who maybe aren't so well versed in all of this tournament stuff. It's a software for pairings and decklist submission, mm -hmm. which means that this tournament has online pairings. You can look at the pairings um, live from home. So if there is one person attending that you know and that you're rooting for. Uh, you can uh, look them up there. Uh, we will we probably get something in the chat yeah, as well, or some of the other guys <laughs> in the chat will help you out if you ask yeah. really nicely. Um, I don't know what no the uh, commands for yeah, the bot are of. at the moment, yeah. or if we have uh, <laughs> that set up yet, but um, there is some 
yeah, still some technical stuff going on, like we said. Today, we're trying to start as early as possible to get the tournament through um, yes. early for the player. Most get it players, rolling yeah, as soon as possible. Yeah, most players prefer it to start um, and then just finish the tournament and then go to sleep after yeah. a hard day one. And then maybe play day two. Everyone here really wants to play day two, I assume. Yeah, um, actually, uh, something I'm really excited for uh, on, on day two is the uh, the uh, World 29 2010 uh, World Championship format tournament. So that's something that oh yeah, that's players that drop out of the tournament can play. And I really, really <laughs> want to go around on day two and watch some games in this format because yeah, so it's like from way back in the day. So yeah, maybe some of the players actually don't want to play um, <laughs> in the break, so but uh, don't want to play in day two and maybe play one of the interesting uh, yeah, side even events. So even if you drop out, there's so much fun stuff you can do here, like um, also win a box is a thing. So yeah, all, uh, players always really enjoy the side events. I think we're getting closer to the game, actually. Well, they're still setting yeah, up. So setting we, up. we have a lot of um, players waiting here. Mm. Round one, Yeah. like we said, all is moving very fast here, but um, all the players are seated. We're actually sitting in the middle of uh, like basically in the middle of the room, I can see most of the players here. I can see the featured match uh, over there, and all the judges are located here. <laughs> so um, yeah, don't try to. We we hope this banner behind us does doesn't move. <laughs> um, yeah. So for everyone who just tuned in, this is the Bochum Regional Championship in Germany, the first regional championship of 2020. Um, of yeah. course. Worldwide, not in America. The first American one is, I think, next week in Dallas. Yes. Um, we are playing the standard format, uh, the first regional that we stream that has um, the new set. Yeah, it's actually the first standard European regional, which is kind of interesting. There has been so many events, um, like in all, all over the world, like the Singapore regionals and um, Malaysia regionals. And yeah, but actually, we haven't had a standard event in Europe, so. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so interesting how uh, um, it will turn out in the end. Like how <laughs> players will adapt to the global matter. Like how they will make their own adaptions to the decks from all over the world. Personal, add personal preferences, and yeah, we'll yeah. see. So, like we said, round one sometimes has a little bit of a delay. So um, we just we are, we are just going to wait for that. Also. Um, yeah, for everyone who just tuned in, round one, we already decided for the featured match is uh, Alessandro Kimasoli against uh, Pedro Torres. So Alessandro is really well known <laughs> for playing a stall and lock decks and something like yes. that. Um, so since we're using RK9, we can take a look at the deck list uh, later during the round, but we don't have it at the moment, so we don't actually know for sure uh, what they're playing. Actually, Pedro told me what he's playing, but I forgot. <laughs> so I apologize for that, but... Um, yeah, maybe even he redecided, he reconsidered anyway. Yeah. So, uh, People change know. their decks all the time. Yeah, I can. Like. Yeah, so <laughs> um, before going into round one, so what are your current feelings about the format? Um, I think, like, the format is really split up into. I think into two kinds of decks that the people are playing. I think there's on one hand there's green decks like Gardevoir and Tina Chomp as like the most popular, and then Lucario Melmetal and Reshizad maybe as less popular green decks. And then there's also Welder decks. I think Mewtwo is like the top tier contender for Welder decks and uh, decks that try to just explode, um, like, like spread energy all over the board and um, get rolling as soon as possible, start dealing huge damage from turn two on. And um, yeah, and the other like Welder deck that we have seen is Ability Zard, which actually won, won the Sao Paulo International. Um, but I feel like that has been on the decline. Um, yeah, green stacks have really been rising up so far. And uh, yeah, we saw a lot of Tina Chomp, uh, which is like, a really interesting deck, I feel like, because Tina Chomp has been around for a while, like the Giratina the Gachomp card we have had for some time, but people didn't really play it, but now it feels like people have discovered how powerful the combo of uh, Power Plant plus Reset Stamp really is. Like putting your opponent down to one or two cards in hand and locking their GX abilities with Power Plant is just so powerful, and uh, yeah, I think Tina Chomp, since 
I feel like Tina Chomp has a really easy way to deal with uh, other tag teams since you just ping them for 40 and then or you spread 40 or spread damage all around the board and then you just take a one shot with Calamitous Slash. So they have a really easy time to deal with uh, other tag teams. Um, and yeah, it, the consistency of greens and the strength of stamp plus power plant is like really, really good. So yeah, these these ki two decks are the oh, these two kinds of decks are the kinds of decks I would watch out for. Yeah, so we actually streamed. Uh, if you saw that, we also live streamed a remote stream via Card Market, which had uh, the same format as well. It was right after uh, Sao Paulo, and there were also a lot of interesting decks there. And uh, it seems like the round is moving forward. We will keep you updated on, on yes. that. Um, and yeah, I really, I, I really like the ADP. I think it's a very interesting um, deck. Like this kind of mechanic hasn't existed yet. Like the using a Jax attack and then and taking extra changing, prizes. Basically, yeah, changing the game yeah. rules mid game. Um, that's really interesting, and also in the pre Sun and Moon, uh, pre Sword and Shield format, uh, still with only Sun and Moon cards. There's still a lot, I think, um, that has been undiscovered. So yeah. when when Sao Paulo were like well, like Rashiram Charizard won, which was very unexpected, I think, for most people. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And like it yeah. came out of out, out of words as a really strong deck, and then it was on the decline since people dec discovered it more, and uh, it was more widely played, and then it suddenly rose back up to the top um, for Sao Paulo, which was certainly like unexpected. Like it only had one new card from the Cosmic Eclipse expansion, but now people have adapted the Cosmic Eclipse cards more into their decks, and they have taken the meta overtaken the meta a little bit more yeah, since then. The new sets are very weird because they have so many cards, but the good cards, uh, the, like the cards that actually get used, they're kind of the number stays the same. So for a Cosmic Eclipse, I don't think there are too many, like percentage-wise, it's a very weak set. But uh, you can actually look this up on our website as well. You can check the, um, we have a new card section. You can go on cards and like, and then you can take a look how many percent of each set is actually being used in decks that we have in our car uh, card database. So uh, if you want to take a look like, oh, how strong was, like how influential was this set? How influential was that set? Uh, you can always check. Of course, this changes a lot with the um, yeah, ice time progressive uh, progresses. But yeah, Cosmic Eclipse had the Osseus Dialga, then Tag Whistle, and the Tag yeah. Team Supporter card. That I really, really like the Tag Team Supporters. Like the Tag Team, the, the Tag Call Engine yeah. is uh, something you just can put into the Tag Team decks and then make it just a little bit more consistent since Tag Call becomes an out to your Pokemon and to your supporters. Even like Cynthia and Caitlin is one of the supporters that just boosts consistency. It's not even a situational supporter, it just. If your hand is like kind of rough and you just be a, uh, be able to draw three, even if you're not able to use the secondary effect, that's really really good to boost um, your deck's consistency and then just maybe get into a game that you wouldn't otherwise be able to play. Yeah, so um, this is a very interesting addition. It kind of reminds me of uh, like there used to be a card called Holland Transceiver. Yeah, Holland Transceiver. Which was back it was in the day. just like. The supporter cards you could search with it. Hello. There was Holo Mentor, which was can a really strong supporter yeah. card. You? But the other supporters yeah, were just like myself. fine. But like just because you have that item card, just <laughs> additional <laughs> outs for your supporter cards in general. Um, so you play these supporters whatever. and tech supporters. Of course, there are which some uh, which have I like really which care. are just r really good on their own. <laughs> but just having the option to yes. look, uh, look to use your tech hold to search for them and your Pokemon. Um, that's really interesting. So it seems like we are ready to. Uh, go so uh, yes. like we just said we have uh, Alessandro Kemasoli we prepared this uh, slide for you uh, just to show you the kind of decks he's played so I, I mentioned earlier that he's really known for his stall decks and you can see he won a regional with Regigiga Super <laughs> which uh, looks oh, really? oh my god <laughs> a giant Pikachu <laughs> okay so okay. Okay, please, can you hear me? A lot of a lot. A lot going on here. Yeah, yeah so I, I can hear me down a minute. Really strong player. Uh, you can look at so him. He's also you going can start to. Uh, he's looking already. forward to play against uh, Pedro. Really? And I, I will show you. Face, I told you. Pedro really <laughs> quick as well. 
I didn't and then we can. Uh, Why? Yeah, I'm very I sorry to cut you. I had time, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not the best like timing. Too long, and but you didn't uh, once? Yeah, so. Uh, Pip is uh, also really, really accomplished. Like, he's, and then he is such a good player. Me, you look at like, like what top four words is the first thing that comes to your mind. And yeah, with his with his Rick with the Rick was a deck back in the day. Yeah, and now we actually uh, get to take a first look at the list. Um, and yeah, as we expected, or at least, yikes. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> as um, as we expected, Alessandro is playing um, Orangu for Orangru yes. in this deck. Uh, and also for uh, Pidgeotto, so the version. Yeah, you can guess the rest, I suppose, you know, but we will see. Um, he's really... Like, uh, Alessandro is one of the guys, like, you know, uh, Sander and, and Alessandro yeah, 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 are the ones that, that change a lot of these lock decks so much. Like to they're and like so uh, interesting ways of yeah. adapting. For when people bring, uh, like, stall decks uh, to their HP. local meta, it's so always it's adapted from a list that either Xander or Alessandro created, so... Like, their their lists are getting looked at a lot, so... And uh, usually you see their list as bases uh, so to, to split around and maybe change one or two cards, but usually, like what they what they play oh. is set as the ah, stall, sure. or what Alessandro plays is set as the stall meta, and uh, people just adapt the list and. Who first? Yeah, but he's just one of Whatever. the best, like executing those lists, right? You, it's not only about uh, playing a good list; you also have to execute on it, as we. Yeah, as we see the price cards coming down, you see like the typical stall things in Alessandro's prizes, Rangaroo Papa, Giraffric. Uh, Giraffric is uh, uh, not shouldn't be this imp that important in this matchup. It's usually one of card, and you really said if it's priced in the okay. stall mirror, but this time it's uh, hey, it's fine. And uh, 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 Pedro when is actually playing okay. an okay. ADP variant, as we see by the metal and the water energies in his prize card. Uh, his prizes are not too bad. If he will be able to find the energies early, he should be fine. As All we right. see and them start the game, the as Pedro game goes first. Is rolling. Let's make this a little bit bigger. We are jumping directly into the main game. And we can see um, Pedro is going first and starts with Girachi. This is like when you see Girachi on your starting hand, you, you always, always have to smile, happy. right? Yeah. Like you're like, oh, like my, my boy, like the cute guy who gives you all your cards you want. Um, it's such an amazing card. So Jirachi, when you start with it, um, while it's active, it allows you to look at the top five cards yes. of your deck. And then you can take a trainer card from there, uh, reveal it, put it into your hand, shuffle the rest back. And then Jirachi goes to sleep. The sleeping card is not actually too relevant at the moment since there is a card called Escape Board, Escape yes. board yeah, which allows you to retreat even if you're asleep and also lowers your retreat cost by one. So Jirachi can retreat for free even if it's sleeping. Um, so it's just a really great card to start with. Just gives you extra outs, uh, of course, extra outs for supporter cards, but also extra outs for all the <laughs> other stuff you need. Yeah, and Pedro Jirachi going first, opening with uh, charge ball. Yeah, Jirachi is actually great because also uh, free pivots are always nice. You always want to have free pivots so you can promote something if something gets knocked out. Uh, um, then you can uh, also, because you want to decide what to promote, like uh, at the point when you need to, right? You don't want to promote something and then see you messed up. As we see the Stellar Wish come down. And also you want to play switching cards in your deck a lot of the times. And if you play Jirachi and you play switching cards, it's like it gives you deck a uh, huge consistency boost and uh, yeah that's really good so you see him grab the tag call as we talked about tag call grabbing pokemon and supporters yeah grabbing this in the arcade link um yeah gusmahala allows you to search for uh, if you discard two cards from your hand you can use the bonus effect search for stadium a tool and a special energy and these are like really specific cards that are hard to search out currently like gusmahala is the only card that allows you to search for Special energies directly, I I think. Yeah, as we see, the Cynthia Caitlin <laughs> come down, draw some more cards, discarding the Rosa. Pedro already probably knows he's like up against Stall, so he w he knows that the Rosa is pretty useless later on. Yeah, and, and one, one thing I just want to move your attention to is the order of cards he played. That was yes. very well done. So he starts with playing the Cherish Ball. This allows him to take uh, Arceus Dialga Palkia from his um, deck into his hand. He puts it in his hand and then he uses Stellar Wish because you make your chances a little bit better. This is really like a really small number, but you have to do this every turn, every round. Then these numbers add up, 
Um, so he has a better chance of hitting what he wants with the Stellar Wolf. Yeah. Then use a Stellar Wolf for tech call. Then place tech call. Um, yeah, draws the cards. Got an energy, and you can see that he plays Rainbow Energy, which is of course really nice with uh, Guzma Hala, like we just mentioned, and yeah. and his turn. And then we see Pokegi come down from Alessandro. He wants to find a Professor M's lecture right here. Yes, um, as we see that come down, and he actually has another Poke Gear in his hand, so he will probably. Uh, hold on to that because he already found what he needed for this turn. He can chill a little bit um, as we actually see the elms go to into his hands. So maybe he's choosing to play another supporter. Actually, if you play uh, special energies in your deck, you're really weak to the supporter Faber, uh, which just sends your special energies to the lost zone. Um, and yeah, Alessandro obviously plays one in his list. Um, yeah, as we see him searching his deck for the three pidgeys getting the air mails uh, online as soon as possible like evolving into two pidgeotos and then just cruising through his deck um, and then putting the cards into his hand he needs to pull off the combo um, later in the game to yeah basically what you want to do with the pidgey stall you want to stamp your opponent down to one or two prizes uh, one or two cards in hand and let them take a few prizes stamp them then and Mars or Jesse and James the remaining cards out of their hand and then lock their top deck with the card chip to bisex which allows you to rearrange the top three cards of their deck uh, like put one on top and shuffle the, the the other two back into his deck and also you use the um, Articuno's GX attack to discard all of the energy from one of their Pokemon. So you have a really, really strong lock option, uh, but you need to get all those, all of those cards um, in your hand at the right time. So that's why you set up with the Pidgeotto's. Yeah, Pidgeotto also just allows you to burn through your deck really quickly, and yes. then later, like you, you use resource management, and at the very late game, you don't even have any deck left, so use resource management, put three cards there, and then you can draw them all with your Pidgeotto's, which is really nice. But you have to get there, like you have to establish the whole board state um, perfectly. Like your opponent needs to have prize cards taken, then, and then you like you unleash all of that stuff um, to your opponent at once. Um, but for that to happen, you need to yeah, cycle through your deck. So if you have too many deck cards, it doesn't work, but you also always need certain cards. Um, and it's also really interesting to see yeah, just players performing um, this kind of deck because it's so weird to play against. Like, like you just want to attack very often, and then at some point your opponent has a very huge hand. And the way to play against it is also using reset stamp. Yeah, because you want you to know disrupt them. You yeah. know they have the combo in hand already, like by turn four or something, they have the combo ready. But uh, you, if you reset them, them, you may be able to get the combo out of their hand. Yeah. And that's what Alessandro wants to prepare for because he, know he, he knows that the stamp will come eventually. So you see actually another tech call p played by Pedro. Uh, I don't think he will actually bench another ADP in this matchup because you only need one to GX attack. The GX attack is actually really good because um, it gives the PG player way less time to actually find their pieces that they need um, because you are able to take extra prize cards after you use the GX attack from the um, Arceus Diaga Park here. So yeah, we probably see the Jirachi Retreat and then the GX attack right here. Yeah. Or and maybe he will save The GX attack also prevents the opponent from using uh, Stamp for one. So yeah. they always need to discard two. So if your opponent has one prize card left, you can just play Stamp at Mars and that's it. But if they have two prize cards left, you need to use Team Rocket. Um, and then discard a bunch of cards, so they just need more hand cards to get the combo, which makes it a lot easier for the ADP player to just play around it by using, yeah, stamp the opponent and then hope they don't get the whole hand. Actually, Pedro didn't jax this turn, which yeah, is kind of interesting. Yeah, I was just going to mention. Um, because he, he knows that the Articuno, like, the Articuno is already in the active, so if he jaxes right here, uh, then Alessandro could just follow up with the Cold Crush, and Pedro would be left with the uh, with the ADP without any energy in the active and um, he would have no way to get an ultimate ray off on the next turn um, to accelerate any Jump energy off. into play. So I think he wants to hold off. Um, like maybe you will start with ultimate ray, get energy into play and then GX after. Because if you ultimate ray, the Articuno GX attack becomes way less valuable because you are able to accelerate three energies into play from your deck. So yeah, really smart decision to not just 
do the autopilot play, send the uh, ADP yep. up NGX, but uh, hold on to it and just yeah. wait for a turn. Now the only problem is that Crushing Hammer is a card yeah. that exists, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really strong. Flip a coin, a fat discard energy from your opponent that basically just buys your turn. Um, I don't really know if Alice, like, the best way for Alessandro to uh, pilot this situation right now. I would probably just play the hammer and then yeah. hope. You uh, want to spam hammers turn. as early as possible. Yeah, and also the earlier you get them at the discard pile, the earlier you can use resource management to get them back, and then you just get the effects more often. However, here with the Articuna active currently, uh, maybe uh, Alessandro is not able to retreat, and also he flipped oh, two tails, tails, which is really <laughs> unfortunate. Um, Pedro's happy to see that. <laughs> uh, I think he also has Faba in his hand. Yeah, Faba is so really strong. Faba is uh, allows you to, you to get rid of a special no, energy no, card. <laughs> You're fine. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he decided to not yeah. play that. Yeah, I'm pretty already sure I think. Oh, did he play some? Oh, yeah, he played the Professor M at the yeah. beginning, I think. So, um, yeah. One of Stellar the Wish again from Pedro. Let's see, yeah, mm. probably grab the stamp. I would do it because, like, yeah, have just have the option to disrupt your opponent. How if you know his hand is good, then eventually Sorry. just put it down and then uh, yeah actually something which is kind of interesting uh, looking at the list that uh, Pedro is not playing the cryogonal which allows you to uh, train or item lock your opponent which is really really good in this matchup especially um, so yeah that's usually attack against uh, against all the stalled variants like Doyle stall and Pidgeotto control but Pedro isn't playing it so he will have a harder time with the matchup as we actually see the second ADP come down um, yeah because he saved for the ultimate ray he wants to have something that he can accelerate to and then if Alessandro uh, code crushes one of the ADPs then uh, Pedro will still have another ADP with three energy that is ready to GX attack yep. on the following so turn. So this way Pedro um, he knew that altered creation of course uh, followed by using Ultra and Ray would of course put him in a like in a good position because you um, get the extra effect extra damage extra price card but yeah, like Martin just said, your Pedro uh, Alessandro just used the GX attack. Of uh, like he would probably play. Uh, yeah, he would just attack because it's still active. Um, but this way, Pedro gets a lot of energy cards in play. So if Alessandro uses GX attack now, he could still use it later. I'm pretty sure he plays Misty and yeah. Lorelai. Yes, he does. So in Did theory, he could still use it later, but he would need a lot of cards to do it. And also, Pedro is probably not too keen or to discard it uh, to knock out an Articuno because. It would then give him three prize cards. If and he then he would be more susceptible to the stamp of one, yes. That's yeah, and also right. he, he could get just immediately get stamped to three, so Alessandro already knows Pedro's hand is quite big. And also there is a stamp in there, um, because you actually have to reveal. So yes. Alessandro has a lot of information about Pedro's hand. He knows Pedro has a bunch of supporter cards, because he used to take whistles. Um, he knows probably another card there that I didn't pick up. And also he knows that there is a stamp. So yeah. uh, for Pedro, using Altered Creation here would have been a really problematic uh, turn to make. Yeah, so I like I like holding it and then just seeing where it goes. You you're not in a rush versus PG. You can you can chill for one turn and then just see what react to what uh, what your opponent is doing. Yeah, and also, well, Alessandro can't retreat, so um, yeah, there's probably no like in theory he could, but. Um, I really like the inclusion of Hapu in the in the deck uh, in in the Pidgey deck because it allows you to thin out um, the cards out of your deck you don't want to see anymore. Um, like after turn one and turn two, Elms becomes really useless and usually it's just discard fodder for the Jesse and James and Misty and Lorelei and stuff. So yeah, as we see. Stamp, Melo, Lana, and a Ranguru, and another card hit the discard pile. And yeah, probably Alessandro wants to start resource managing soon to give himself more use uh, the outs to more useful cards in his deck. Maybe he will hold on the onto the crushing hammer, but I, I, yeah, he, he there's no reason uh, not to play it because uh, Pedro already has so many energies into play. You just um, and if you GX, you can only get rid of the energy on one Pokemon, so you need to start yes. working on. The energy is on the other ADP, and yeah, spamming crushing him is just uh, the only option you have in this at this point. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> oh, I did not <laughs> spend too much attention right there. So we yeah. see a 
Melo and Lana back into the back into the Jirachi to just get another Stellar Wish in. Yeah, this is like if you play switching cards, then just just put Jirachi in Escape on your deck, please. Yeah, this is and just also the Jirachi is just now it's one extra card for Pedro. More information for him. Um, he knows no more about things he can do, and he also knows that. Well, I mean, this turn would be perfect for Cryogonal if he played it, uh, yeah, because you could just doesn't. item lock, prevent the opponent from stamping. Uh, this is a, like this kind of situation right now is one of the reasons he would use it. But I have to correct myself. Um, he hasn't used his Jax attack yet, yeah. so uh, he would still need to use the Jax attack. And then Pedro will probably. I mean, I would just use the one with the special energy cards because special energy cards are always a little bit. Yeah, special. Um, there are more. There's oh usually more my hate God. against it. Nice. That's a, that's good. Really, really good timing, I think, because if he, um, like, if he gets rid of something like a reset stamp, then um, uh, Alessandro has to find his other reset stamp to to put Pedro down eventually later in the game. And if you g are able to get rid of both of them, then you have no fear of your opponent being able to disrupt your hand. But we let's see, this is a really, really hard decision. Um, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm really excited to see what, or like, yeah, it's really interesting to see what Pedro will go for here. And it looks like two crushing hammers. Okay. Yeah, the Gyrophoric has been in his hand from the very beginning. I think it was on his starting hand already. You can also play that Pedro plays a one of fairy energy card because of Mimikyu, I would suppose. Yes, as we actually yeah, see the reset stamp. Reset stamp and crushing hammer. So now Alessandro needs to. Yeah, he's kind of forced to get the um, Articuno on the bench. Yeah, and shuffle. Uh, and get yeah. Like if 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 Alessandro doesn't get the um, crushing hammers back, then the draft react will just attack once more. Then there are no crushing hammer for Alessandro left. So Pedro will then know that he will always have one of the ADPs to attack with, because the only way for then from Alessandro to get rid of the energy cards. Um, is Articuno, which in theory you yep. can still do. You can use a custom catcher and then Misty Lorelei and use a Jax attack once That's more. That's a lot of but cards. Yeah, you have to do yep. so much every turn. Yeah. So if Pedro is uh, then fast enough, or maybe I'm wrong. Like this is one of the things I'm thinking about currently. But yeah, Pedro I definitely knows more about it. I think that, Pedro I mean. put himself in a really really good spot. That Giraffic even caught me by su by surprise. I think yeah, that timing was pretty good because now the. Um, Pedro even has a great catcher in his hand, so even if Alessandro is able to retreat the Articuno, then Pedro can just bring it up with great check catcher again and then um, force Alessandro to uh, retreat into his Ranguru again. So, yeah, that's like I Pedro put himself into a pretty good position uh, right now, and he actually he is the one who's putting pressure on Alessandro to do something. and. That's usually something you don't see because usually the Pidgey player is just laying back and chilling and let the, you let your opponent take some prize cards. But this way, Pedro is pressuring Alessandro a lot because losing access to your valuable resources that you um, would eventually resource manage back into your deck. Um, if they're gone for the whole game, then um, yeah, then you are really limited in your options. So really interesting uh, to see how Alessandro will deal with the situation he has been put in. Yeah, so Alessandro plays Pokemon Fan Club uh, going into Ditto and his uh, second Articuno. So the Articuno allows him to um, switch with the active Pokemon and then also move uh, water energy cards to it. However, currently that's th like this is one of the reasons you play Pokemon Fan Club because it's an out for it and it also puts it into yes. your hand. Maybe he will even take the knockout on a Girafrag because uh, he has the water energy in his hand and then just the ability would allow him to put all the energy onto the active. I don't know, but that's a play he could do if, yeah, he if the Giraffe yeah. is, a, is a big enough threat to his game plan. Um, um, or otherwise just retreat, then stars resource management. Yeah, that's also possible. But yeah, very interesting. Uh, yeah, well Alessandro is probably not a situation you are too like he's too familiar with but if there is one person who knows how to handle <laughs> it <laughs> it's, I would him. Say it's, it's definitely him. him yeah yeah really oh actually i s uh, one thing that alessandro is also playing is uh the persian from team up from with ma ma the make and pay attack it's just discard your opponent's hand down to four cards and you get to look at their hand like and then you discard it 
uh, down to four, so you just leave your opponent with the dead hand most of the time, which is a really, really good tech to play, um, or to, to include in your deck. Um, so, yeah, I'm like, uh, maybe it will come out, but yeah, we just see the retreat right here. Go back into the resource management. But now he has a really tough decision, but because do you resource manage your hammers back in and give yourself some options, or do you resource manage your energies back in um, and just be sure you don't run out of energies? I think he can like he can afford to lose one of his uh, water energy, but losing too much, um, like yeah, that uh, losing too much too many energy is uh, really something he doesn't want to happen. Yeah, and also I'm not entirely sure what other crucial cards are there? I think they're like there are a bunch of elms and Pokemon pocket gears which are not too relevant yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say but uh, it seems like he's thinking a little bit about it so there has to be something else um, that he wants to get back um, yeah we see two hammers he definitely wants to conserve them but he like already one is already in the lost zone so he can't get into a state where he's like just resource manage all your hammers back and then spam them every turn uh, so yeah, we see one energy. He, you, you want to, you want to preserve those yeah, energies since so you play, you play so little energy. So um, yeah, you want to uh, have access to them. Yeah. So right now, both uh, Alessandro has been like kind of um, doing what I expected him to just try to get the crushing hammers back because they're really important in the late game. Um, you need so many cards to get rid of your opponent's energy cards, otherwise. Um, and this way just ensures that he is able to uh, yeah, get the lock, like keep the lock active later. And we see Pedro, I cannot really, I, I think, think it's, it's Mars. Supporter card. Oh, yeah, it looks Maybe Jesse and James? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it's, it looks Joker. like a Jesse and James full art. So yeah, getting rid of this is also, like Pedro is slowly getting rid of all of Alessandro's ways to discard his hand. So that's, uh, that's really good. And then eventually he can... Uh, if he if he is like okay, I got rid of a lot of cards that my opponent uh, needs to disrupt me. Then eventually I can just go ahead and take my prize cards. He's not he's not in a rush. He can just chill and apply pressure uh, to Alessandro's board. And yeah, as we see, Poker Gear. Um, I don't even really know what you would like because Alessandro ha already has so many cards in his hand um, or has access to so many cards. So yeah, as we see him grab the Tate and Liza, but now it's like uh, pretty difficult to uh, see what, like, well, it's interesting to see what uh, Pedro will do next because there are not as many valuable resources in Alessandro's discard pile to get rid of um, or to, to get into the lost zone. Um, and yeah, also Alessandro can recover more cards every turn than um, like uh, he, if he only plays like, oh, oh yeah, so yeah, Ditto active. Yeah. Hmm, what that? <laughs> what might that be? We all know what's coming. Yeah, make it's him pay. Persian. <laughs> oh so no. <laughs> yeah. So Pedro was playing very conservative um, currently, but yeah, make him pay. I think the name speaks for itself. Pedro is just handing him like the cards. Like here you go, do whatever you want <laughs> with them. Oh no. Uh, and now Alessandro can uh, get rid of all the key cards uh, for Pedro he can kind of like choose which cards to keep yeah just leave Pedro with a dead hand um, yeah that's like that's another way of uh, swinging the game back into your favor if your opponent applies pressure with giraffe rig just go and then attack their hand instead of uh, just their board attack their hand especially currently there is nothing like uh, Alessandro in his turn didn't play anything other than the uh, Swen and uh, what like what's the card called again like the card the it's not a tag team supporter, <laughs> but there are two uh, Tate people Liza. on it. Yeah, Tate and Liza, <laughs> um, to switch. Yeah, I, was, I just had the German name uh, in mind. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and the Japanese name. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so you can just switch into it, then use uh, Persian's attack to punish Pedro for using Giraffe Rig. And now, again, it's a really, really cool game right now. So I'm happy we found this. Uh, match up here and now Pedro n but now Pedro knows and he can manage his hand later and he like making a pay is just I think it's just a like you use it once and then your opponent will play around it for the rest of the game so I think um, now um, like now that the surprise effect has been gone uh, Pedro won't be caught off guard again by the Persian um, yeah as we see the airmail is coming through 
This is like actually one of the m more intense PG games that I've been able to watch. So yeah, I, I really like where this is going because like uh, both have their own way to apply pressure to each other and threaten their opponent's board um, or their the resources that they have access to. As we see, yeah, pro there's, there's no, no point in attacking again with make and pay, so you just get re do resource management and then get the cards back that you, yeah. that you play in this turn. Especially the energy uh, he just retreated with, and now one of his um, crushing hammers. Also, make him pay is actually really nice because you know your opponent's hand, except for the top deck. Mm -hmm. So in theory, I mean, he didn't play a... Um, a trick shovel, uh, like a chip chip axe, because he knew, well, that would just go into the lost zone. So he doesn't really want that, but it's definitely something to consider that Alessandro knows there was no energy in Pedro's hand and he does probably doesn't play a lot, so... Oh, double hits. Very nice. Oof. Yeah, so if Alessandro wants to go all in, he could just play the uh, ice axe now. And then just like, yeah, if Pedro doesn't have an energy... If he didn't top deck an energy last turn, then... It's yeah. a lot of energies and Alessandro knows, okay, Pedro doesn't have any switching options. Um, but Alessandro is playing the safe way, just resource yeah, management. Yeah, just resource management, the card deck you just use. Because now even if Pedro gets an energy, there's nothing really in Alessandro's discard pile that um, could go to Lost Zone. As actually Pedro top decks the switch, oh I oh think, really nice. and then is able to go into his Jirachi, go for a Stellar Wish, or maybe fish out a supporter card or tech call. Uh, from the top of his deck. <coughs> Going back. Okay, just another switch. Maybe he will. Uh, he can. Maybe he will start attacking now again with ultimate ray and then just um, power up his giraffe so it isn't susceptible to any crushing hammer. What I actually, what I would like to see is uh, Pedro. Maybe uh, he also plays a Mimikyu in his deck, um, yeah. the copycat one. Yeah. So he could, in theory charge up the Mimikyu and then copycat resource management uh, to put cards back into his deck, which could be a play that he he would be looking for at some point during well the game, yeah but I it's difficult to pull off. Yeah. I, yeah. But yeah, just uh, that's just another option that uh, he has in his deck, and I'm sure he, he has considered it. And uh, oh Ma yeah. Copying make him pay would have been amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's actually that's true. <laughs> yeah. As um, we see, just yeah, the ultimate Yeah, so we ray. see a skateboard being attached, nothing too crazy here. Um, Alessandro promoting the Pidgeotto, which has not an skateboard, but a uh, Recycle Energy attached. Recycle Energy puts itself back into the hand when it gets discarded from play, so you can just retreat for it. Uh, so this is, it's not a free retreat, but it's the closest thing on Alessandro's board to yeah, if you don't, if you don't need to attach an energy this turn, just attach your Recycle anywhere uh, at any Pokémon that has one retreat and then you you're fine. You can retreat that Pokemon later and then have the access to the energy instantly. Yeah. So Pedro um, just attacked, not using the Jax attack uh, once more. So he draws a single prize card. Um, I think he still has his Great Catcher. I don't know if it got discarded. Maybe he wants to go from th from three prizes to zero, like on yeah, the Arctic Yeah, that, that seems like a really strong play. Um, but I don't know what. I don't remember what Alessandro discarded with Mike He definitely pay. discarded uh, custom catchers, but and probably the great catcher since I don't see it in his hand uh, at the moment. But maybe he will have access to another gust effect. Probably there are two more custom catcher left in his deck uh, to bring up the Articuno. Um, yeah, but let's yeah. see uh, where the game is taking us. So now Alessandro does have the option to use the GX attack from Articuno. But that would, yeah, use up his GX attack and then if Pedro has just a switching card, which would be like, like even attack whistle would give him the, um, now, no, it's called Mellow. Yeah. And, um, yeah, just switch, take the knockout, or just attack with the yeah. GX attack, depending on uh, what Pedro feels like is the better um, point of events. And if, now, like knocking out the Articuno d probably doesn't help too much, I guess, but it really depends. Um, so Alessandro plays Rosa, yeah. really strong card. Um, in other matchups, a lot of Pokemon will get knocked out, and yeah. this just gives you access to so much. Being able to search your deck for a uh, uh, Pokemon and a trainer and then basic energy is really, 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 really good because you want to have access to uh, your trainer cards. Uh, like uh, the trainer cards in the Pidgeot control deck are so strong, right? Like reset stamp, chip, chip, ice, and 
um, crushing hammer, even though it's on a coin flip, or like, s <laughs> like it's not even on a coin flip bas because it's basically oh, no. infinite because your resource management them back anyway, and uh, yeah, because it then you have basically access to infinite crushing hammers as long as you're able to drag out the game uh, long enough. Yeah, as we actually see, two energy, uh, like one energy removed from each ADP, which is really nice, Did because uh, it forces Pedro to commit another energy instead of just <laughs> being able to switch. So uh, yeah, also, um, like, I, I mean, every, everyone who actually plays this game a lot will already have noticed, but Alessandro discarded the water energy and not the metal energy, because there are already a bunch of metal mm. energy in play, and uh, this way, no, uh, like this way, if uh, Pedro gets another only metal energy, he can't attack. But if uh, Alessandro discards the uh, metal energy, then he could attack with any energy. So yeah, yeah, this That's is very important, but nothing to it's uh, like not amazing. Yeah, but it's something like if you're a newcomer, then maybe you. That's something um, you should notice. notice but yeah, as we just see resource management. Yeah, probably now he will uh, Alessandro will spam more crushing hammers and uh, force Pedro to like basically say to Pedro, okay, if you don't take any knockouts, if you just um, sit here and try to get rid of my resources. I'm just gonna um, spam as much crushing hammers as possible and try to slow down the game as, uh, yeah, oh as much as possible. Oh, and here we see uh, Alessandro starting with um, the ice exiting. Yes. Um, the thing is, in theory, Pedro could retreat because of the um, escape board attach, but yep. that would just discard all the energy, and this en en energy card is the most important thing mm -hmm. currently. And this is also why the... Um, Jack's attack from RCS Dialga Palkia is so uh, Im important because um, it just makes you win faster. And yeah. you need al you always need three energy cards to uh, take a knockout. And if you try to take out six Pokemon from your opponent, <coughs> then they have so many turns yeah, that they, they can resource manage for their crushing hammers. So. Yeah, actually, this this has been a quite a quite a long game considering it's ADP versus PG. Usually, th it goes really fast because they are uh, able to take. Uh, uh, Pedro would be able to take two prizes if he wants to. But I like the slower approach at the matchup, um, like just uh, feeling out what what Alessandro uh, is going to do. If you like the the giraffe play was really good. Now, as we see, actually, the wa Pedro had his had the water energy in hand. Will be able to. Uh, ultimate ray if he likes to i guess um yeah maybe put the last energy uh, like l the last energy he has left into in the stack uh, into play accelerate that um yeah i think pedro's also considering because um, that would apply a lot of pressure since there is nothing that can retreat on alessandro's bench so if alessandro wants to attack he has to use tate and liza yeah um which means that yeah it's it's a supporter card uh, so Pedro would look at Alessandro's discard pile, how many Lieutenant Search are away, how many Ted and Liza are away, and then he has to consider, does this make sense or not? And Pedro actually went for the hmm. uh, Jax attack, Altered Creation, so now we play a completely different game. <laughs> now we are in <laughs> Plus take 30 two. damage. Uh, every attack deals 30 more damage, and also every Pokemon you knock out gives you an extra prize card. So if Pedro only needs to take two knockouts now if everything goes well for him. Yes. Uh, one on Articuno and uh, Andi Articuno GX, and Did one on an Oranguru. And Alessandro, no, uh, like we know that the Crushing Hammers are at the bottom currently, mm -hmm. so Alessandro would need to shuffle his own deck somehow. Which, and if he doesn't have access to one card that lets him shuffle his own deck, maybe I th it looks like it's so thick that he can't get to the bottom um, by itself. Maybe he has Harpu that would give him the two Crushing Hammers, and then it's down to Lady Luck. Let's see, Crushing Hammer. Um, if that works out or not, but uh, let's see. Oh, actually, this is. I think his deck is thin enough for this yeah, to work. Yeah, I work think out. he only has two, two or three cards left, so yeah. So these are. Are these the crushing hands? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a communication Alessandro already not knew about. Not too so valuable, so it's fine, I guess. Yeah, so Alessandro drew one crushing hammer or two. Oh, yeah, he actually got both of them, so his deck yeah, is now thin enough for him to just uh, draw through it every turn, mm -hmm. uh, which is the perfect game position basically you want to be in it's not completely yes. perfect like we said there is some stuff in the loss zone which isn't supposed to be there 
And okay, we see Kataeus, and this is really important. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, oh, he, uh, he okay. has a heads, so and then uh, removes the water energy. I actually don't know how many water energy Pedro has left. There's one in his Brythe cards, and quite a few has been have been discarded already. So, yeah, interesting uh, to see how many water are actually left in his deck. Um, so he has no rainbow energy left. Um, the fairy energy is gone already. There's yes. Um, one metal energy in the prize card, so all energy, actually all energy Pedro has left is metal energy, I think. Uh, it's water energy, I think, if he has water energy left at all. But uh, so any energy We're he gets now is a water energy. So yeah, maybe. Mm. I think you want to commit to the cold crush like a little bit later because you already know Pedro's running low on energy. There can't be that many energy left in his deck that he will be able to accelerate. So. Um, yeah, maybe waiting on it would be fine. Um, yeah, as we see, the chip chip manipulating Pedro's top deck. Yeah, I think there should be one water energy left, um, but I'm not I'm not 100% sure. As we see, his top deck being manipulated. Pedro is sure he will dead draw next turn again or draw a dead card next turn again. Um, and yeah, we probably see resource management. Um, also, no, uh, now Alessandro should be pretty sure that, or is probably pretty sure that all of the cards he has in his um, in his discard pile are safe from being uh, lost zone from Giraffric, because he has a lot of control over the board state. Um, I don't think, uh, yeah, he he should have been keeping track of actually the the cards Pedro has been drawing after the make and pay. Uh, maybe there's one or two unknown cards in Pedro's hand uh, for Alessandro, but he should know the majority of the cards in Pedro's hand. Yeah, now Alessandro actually, uh, he considered attaching energy to Articuno, but he, he attached it to his Pidgeotto, uh, because he's like maybe he's afraid that Pedro will have an energy and a great catcher, or the maybe even double custom catcher, who knows. Mm -hmm. And then if the Articuno gets knocked out, he would lose that energy. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't be too relevant, uh, because Alessandro could just attach a new energy and then use Articuno's ability to use the Jake's attack. But yeah, this is why take nice. the risk? So he can just attach the water energy. And yeah. Pedro actually got a switch that is really, really crucial, because now it can Stella wish again for what seems like a lead. Yeah, that's yeah. what you would like to see get a draw supporter, get out of this, like, get out of his dead hand that uh, Alessandro has put him into. Yeah, and also, every card you draw with Lily now is an unknown card for Alessandro. Yes. Uh, yeah, so Pedro just benches Kelio. Usually you wouldn't want to bench them because they are just a nuisance. Um, they will get uh, pulled back from Alessandro again. But Pedro knows it's more way more important to draw extra cards. If you don't get the yeah. energy here, probably this game is over anyways. And it seems like he did not get, didn't get the energy. what he needed. So yeah, mm. maybe maybe he w yeah he can search his deck. Look what's left um, with I the tag call. Uh, he has only one custom catcher, and the other one is priced, and the other two are in his discard pile, I think. So um, right. Yeah, yeah, I think he has, and also he has uh, three cards that he cannot use in his hand. So there are two Jirachi and a Chaotic Swell, so he can't, couldn't even just play down his hand and then maybe get lucky with... Um, yeah, that's a turn without applying pressure, and Pidgeotto really likes to see that, like Alessandro yeah. should be so if happy. If Alessandro's hand is proper, then he should actually be able to put himself in a winning position here. Yeah. Because he can just uh, pull up the uh, Kelio with some kind of gust effect, probably a, a custom catch, like a double custom catcher. But he won't be able to uh, put Pedro's hand down to zero because he ha only has access to one Mars and he can't double Mars because his Palpat is priced and the other Mars is priced oh. and the Jesse and James is in the lost zone. Yeah. So Pedro actually put himself into into a fine-ish position because yeah, he, he drew two tech calls um, with the thing. Lily. So it's it's still bad because he doesn't have an energy, and Alessandro knows that there is no energy. Yeah. But it's better. Th it's better than it could be. It's not great, but um, yeah. Let's just lean back and see uh, what's going to happen now. I think there is not too much to be speculating. Um, Alessandro needs to check if it's worth it for him to invest his resources and just try to disrupt Pedro. Um, if he gets the crushing him ahead, actually, he can use Faber again, and then basically, I then the one ADP is completely without energy. 
Yeah. I think you would discard one on the... Yeah, yeah. Um, True. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah, and Alessandro actually goes for just uh, getting rid of the Chaotic uh, as well. That allows Pedro to play his other Chaotic as well in the following yeah. turn. And also we just talked about Kragona, which is not in Pedro's deck, but it's something a lot of ADPs play, and the card pa Alessandro just discarded is usually something you can use against Yeah, Kragona. Champions Festival is really good tech in Pidgeotto. Against, like, it helps against a lot of stuff, like against uh, Mew spreading, like the Mew that puts uh, three damage counters on your board. You just go Champions Festival and then it turns the two shot on your Pidgeys into a three shot, which is really good. Oh. Makes the math better on the Cryogona versus Oranguru uh, because you can heal heal off the damage and turn the three shot into a four shot. So really, really good. As we actually see the escape word being Faber. Yeah, I just I just said he he showed the Faber and I was like, well, in theory, he could also get rid of the escape board. That would force Pedro to somehow get an energy and a switching card, which is oh, not the very energy likely. was actually the next card. Yeah, we see the top. energy. Just say hello. <laughs> Just says it's there. Act I think that playing the Champions Festival was actually good for Pedro now because I think he had a chaotic spell in his hand. Yeah, now yeah. with Lily, it g just gives him an extra card, uh, which is pretty nice, I, I guess. Maybe thin out the deck. Yeah. Oh, so two tech call. There's actually two water energy left, so there's still there's still a chance uh, that Pedro can pull it off. I think. So two tech calls for both. If for he nothing, gets like a so reset stamp and a knockout, and then on the f and then draws the custom catcher off the prizes, and then custom catches up. I mean, there's still a long way to go, but uh, in theory, it's still possible. So that's why Pedro is still playing. Yeah, and I think he just drew the worst combination of cards you could have gotten from yeah. that Lily. No, just nothing he can play. That's unfortunate. Yeah, but now Alessandro again can be. I think he can be quite sure that there is no energy in Pedro's hand. Yeah, because otherwise, so mm, no, maybe, I don't oh know. Maybe no, either it's no energy or no switching card. Yeah, because he knows that Pedro's missing yeah. something, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So yeah, so and Alessandro's just like, I have three Pidgeys, I have three deck cards, can I take them? <laughs> and Pedro really nice just says yes, because in theory he could, uh, if he really airman, wanted airman, to, he could airman, force airman, Alessandro to use uh, or like sequence it, but... Most competitive players mm -hmm. are really nice about that and just say like, yeah, it doesn't really matter. And we see crushing hammer heads, which is a terrible thing to happen for Pedro. And I think at this point it also seals up this game, yeah, because Alessandro can just discard the metal energy, um, play uh, Faba, I think, get rid yeah. of the other energy. We see another crushing hammer come down. It's tails. You know, it's a five, but. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So they were discussing it something? Uh, no, it's okay. Okay. Guess you're yeah. waiting anyway. <laughs> I think it, could uh, it landed on the deck yeah. and I was not <laughs> They were like, so should they I reflip or should I not yeah. reflip? But it does not really matter that much, probably. Probably it won't matter that much. Um, as we see, oh nice, uh, actually Alessandro will just start aggressively milling. Like if you can't get control of your opponent's hand uh, with Pidgeotto, and oh, come on, come on. Oh, no. Oh, it's the water and the oh, stamp. Oh, ouch. my God. That's so bad. Yeah. If your opponent doesn't do anything with this Pidgeotto, you just can start... Like, if they don't take any prize, you just start milling them aggressively, like, even without locking their hand, and be like, okay, you need to apply pressure to me and take prizes, otherwise you will lose. Yeah, and so here we see probably the... Three prizes, the other... The card that seals yeah. this game up. Yeah, um, Chip Chip Isaac, Chip Chip making Isaac. sure that Pedro won't top deck any energy or any switching card. Um, and now, even if he draws that card... Well now this is actually really weird because Pedro has four prize cards, so Babalam Bryson Man is a little bit risky if uh, Alessandro wants to go for it next turn. Yeah, just go resource management, then... Or yeah. Oh wait, it's not risky because... No, he, will he will top he will deck something and then uh, he will play Bella Bella Bryson Man. I was just going to say that um, Pedro has... Like he has five deck cards now, so he will draw something, then have four left, and if Bella Bella Bryson Man doesn't hit the energy, so if the energy but card is now on the bottom, then Pedro will definitely get it. But even if he does, then he, he has loses no deck, anyway. So because yeah, yeah. So I was just going to say um, that was my <laughs> line of thought, <laughs> but it didn't really help. Let's <coughs> see Stella wish. Yeah, oh he so has Pedro a switch in deck, theory, and then yeah, he just he could concedes. Have, he could have access to a switch, um, but yeah, here we see him finishing game one with. Um,
Yeah, really yeah, unfortunate draw. Happen, guess, There's also not a lot of time left, this. so Alessandro won the first game uh, of the first round of this um, championship. And yeah, Pedro really shot. sad. I think yeah. he played really well, but yeah, he played really, really yeah, well. I really like his lines of play. They were they were really good. Like the giraffe rig was really really nice. Um, and then uh, yeah, applying pressure and then. You saw that he achieved his goal basically by making Alessandro unable to attack his hand, me, but it still wasn't enough because the draws weren't in his favor. Um, least, and and cool. yeah, that just the one so make and pay list. just shifted the shifted the game so much. Yeah, getting yeah. rid of so all of the resources, the stamps yeah. and the custom yeah. catchers, all gone, all gone. And yeah, the yeah, definitely yeah. really nice I was, I was in the deck, as you could the see. Um, at some, like if your opponent just tries to not do something then you can punish them for that. So there are so many things that are just, that you have to, like if you play against uh, Ranguru, I think a lot of it comes from that no one really tests a lot against Ranguru because one, like you saw, one game takes 40 minutes. So if you just want to test like a best of like three games, if you just want to play three casual games yeah. against Ranguru, it's your whole day gone. <laughs> so a lot of players don't really test against it. So they just think about it in their free time. Like, oh yeah, I would do that and I would do that and I would try to do, um, whatever, but sometimes yeah. it's just not uh, like how the game plan or the cards work out, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, and here Maybe we see um, both players are setting up uh, for game two. Let's go. Is? Pedro's going I'm first. Go Starting to Rachi once again. He needs to play lightning fast to finish this game yeah, as soon as possible. In theory, he can still win. Um, looking at the prize cards, there are two crushing hammer prize for uh, Alessandro. So That's nice for Pedro. Pedro is happy about this. Even though he doesn't know, but yeah, uh, and yeah, uh, but I think um, like th with the amount of time we have left on the clock, uh, it won't be possible to achieve the perfect lock anyway. Alessandro just needs to survive um, a few turns and then um, let the time run out. Yeah, um, that's what I think as well. Like he just needs to play a normal game, and then. Yeah, if if Pedro isn't really fast with winning, then it's it's sad. Um. Just yeah, elms into hopefully another elms on the next turn. Like at least that's that's going to be his plan. Um, yeah, Sweet. yeah. Let's see, Pidgey's coming down. There's non-priced. That's really. Uh, like there's one Pidgeotto prize, but that's not too bad for him. See Alessandro actually checking his prize cards also really, um, really important um, because like in these decks your combo relies on just a few cards like the Stamp Mars or Jason James plus Chip Chip Isaacs or the Cold Crush. So you need to check if like mm. two Stamps or two Articunos are priced, and so you can play accordingly. Um, if that is the case, but uh, so far Alessandro has been fortunate with his prizes, and we see just a pass over to Pedro again. Yeah, and now Pedro, did he flip if he wakes up? Well, he doesn't want to waste any time, so um, he's trying to be as fast as possible. We see him playing uh, Hala and uh, Guzma for the other full potential, and here you can see why yeah. this is such a cool card because you can search your deck for a tool which allows him to retreat now, and also for a special energy card, which allows him to attack now, so... Um, yeah, yeah, really useful. Tech, you can use tech call into um, all of the other pieces you need, and here you can see Pedro is speeding up a lot. He doesn't uh, want... like, he really yeah, wants to he use... Yeah, knows, he knows time is running really low. Yeah, he does really want to use his um, possibility to um, get the tie here. I mean, I mean, if one deck can win this matchup in, like, four minutes it is ADP basically because you take extra prizes no other deck would be able to do that and uh, like take six prizes in, in four minutes but yeah if so, some deck can do it it's ADP but if Alessandro gets the Articuno GX attack here that would set Pedro back by a lot and probably seal up the game so let's see if he gets um, if he gets that because that would pe leave Pedro in a board state where he has like um, nothing left uh, to like n um, no energy is left on the board so yeah, yeah. but also with the prize cards of alessandro like two of his crushing hammer prize and one of the articuno one pidgeotto 
Yeah. That's one of the worst price cards you can have in this kind of situation because yeah. the, your, like your opponent would play as aggressive as they can. Usually they probably wouldn't because they know they have a lot of options to win the game. So um, yeah, they will just play like a normal one. But Pedro knows uh, he has to win fast, so he just tries to be um, as fast as he as he can. So yeah. they'll play against that. It's just to have like one random crushing hammer heads that already. Like, if, if he would get a Crushing Hammer Heads this turn, yeah, that they would, would completely destroy Pedro's um, game plan. But, but since they're too yeah. prized, usually it wouldn't matter, but this time, yeah, you're, you're totally right. Uh, in this scenario, it does matter a lot, actually. Yeah, so here we see a Hapu, a great card in this deck, just allows you to get rid of some cards you don't really want. Um, going through your deck fast, like Hapu and... You also, I think, in a few versions of Mewtwo, you play Hapu, so yes. you, you can get an extra chance of discarding a Pokemon GX. Um, but in this deck, it's nice because you can just get rid of, like, you can get back all cards you ever discard. So even if you hit three very important crucial cards that you will definitely need, it doesn't matter. You can just resource management, like, all of them. So even if you get six perfect cards on Hapu, you're like, oh, whatever, yeah, fine. It's okay. I just take the two I need right yeah. now and then get the rest back eventually. Yeah. Here we see a, a pole pad. Um, yeah, to shuffle back the uh, yeah, Bryson man, and I think it was the Hapu. Yeah. And Pedro not even cutting. He's just like, yeah, do, let's do try your to thing. Like every second might be like Pedro. He doesn't know the exact time. Right here, he just yeah. uh, takes a knockout. Three seconds for um, his turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know the exact timer, and every second might be crucial. Like if, like if timeout is right now, yeah. then it would be a Pedro's turn. So he loses one turn. But if timeout is, <laughs> yeah, wait for it. Right now. now. <laughs> yeah. So you saw just the, the time between yeah. I just queued. Um, that's a whole turn that you would lose. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, Alice. Yeah. So this is why <laughs> Pedro's just like trying to be as fast as possible, but. If he gets two turns now, he, he could win. win. Like he just needs to attack twice. Yeah. I mean, Alessandro also knows that, so he wants to do everything in his might to prevent it from happening. Uh, we also, yeah, we have a, a judge sitting there, and also the time is running out. So um, we will do everything perfectly timed for the exact second. So yes. Um, and here we see the crushing. The one hammer. crushing hammer. Let's see the coin flip. <laughs> And this time it stays. So uh, Pedro, I think he was a little bit unhappy that the first three, I think the first three crushing hammer of game one were all hands. Yeah, I, I, yeah, eventually, like the crucial ones, they, they were hands. Okay, like here the we see Rosa, Rosa, so Rosa. we That's definitely know Rosa. this turn's not going to end um, before timeout. So and yeah, time should be and called now. And now time is was um, time was called. So we have a time. This means there are four turns left. So like three whole turns after this turn is yes. finished. So, so Alessandro is the so-called zero turn, then Pedro is the first, Alessandro is the second, then Pedro gets the third turn. Yes. So, so in theory, he could be able to take uh, his four remaining prizes with the ADP if uh, Alessandro doesn't disrupt him too heavily. So actually, there has been a lot of tension has been building. Yeah. I didn't expect it, but yeah, Pedro is uh, it's maybe Pedro can <laughs> win this game, so he can make this a tie. Yeah, that would is, be really which nice would be for really him. Nice for him, yeah. You don't want to lose your first round. Come on, you want to at least tie. Yeah, it's like if you lose the first, r like usually it doesn't really matter. Like you can lose the first round and win out, or if you win out first and then lose the last round, your score at the end is uh, the same. But it makes a difference for your tiebreaker. Your tiebreaker. It's not so important of getting into day two right now. So in yeah. the past, it used to be a lot worse if you lost the first round. Um, and the tiebreaker is just the percentage of wins your opponents have. Which means if you lose the first oh round, you will always get paired against people that already lost a round. Mm -hmm. So it's more likely to get people that will lose more rounds uh, from that. So it's just the chance of getting a good tiebreaker is worse if you lose the very first round. Even if you have the same score at the end. But like, yeah, with the new rules, like new, uh, not not that <laughs> new anymore, but um, with the current rules, it's not that important for yeah, going into day two. Just get 19 points, go into day two, and then you just, uh, yeah, then you just need to go 4 or something to make it into top eight eventually, so not not too bad, right? Huh. Yeah. And here we see um, three Pidgeotto in play. 
see the air mails coming down. Now the time doesn't matter anymore. They can take uh, a little, little bit longer for to make their decisions. Yeah, um, they can take as like you're actually. If it's time out, you don't have more time for anything. You still have to play as fast as usually, but you don't have to rush. Like if yeah. like rushing by the rules is something when you make your try to make your opponent play faster, which is not allowed. But what I mean is, you don't have to try and be fast yes. yourself. Like to be uh, try and be very fast yourself. Um, yeah, so you can um, at you least can, you think can, about you can your take stuff. the time you have. Yes. And if it's uh, like Pedro during his last few turns, he didn't take the time yet. He just attach, attack, shuffle here. And then so this is a lot faster than you would usually play. Yes. But yeah, this is out of the question now. But just wanted to make sure that everyone understands that you do not get a second more time just because it's time out, but you no. don't have to play a lot faster. Yeah, that's what um, I meant. Yeah. You're right. So You're right. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of glare right at the spot of um, Alessandro's current active um, position. Maybe we can fix that later. Um, let's let's see. You have a stumpy right? But <laughs> it's <laughs> a Pidgeotto, and it but it has a recycle <laughs> energy attached. I guess so I didn't see my hand because I need to play. But I think Alessandro so yeah. doesn't really want to use research management now. I think he I wants to go for the combo in the maybe research stamp out the opinion, and just hope that it works. <laughs> Because That's what I I, I guess. By yeah. the way, I guess it's number two is GG. Yeah, yeah, yeah and he does have yeah, both uh, options to wait. Yeah, right. Maybe right he now also just wants to the game is probably wait over. one turn for that. So it's he the reset down to two, two, maybe. one extra. Yeah. Um, because once he uses his GX attack in a long game, you can use multiple GX attacks because of Misty and Lorelei. But this is only um, four turns more. Uh, three yes. more turns after that one. So Alessandra has this turn and then. Um, the next turn after that, and that's it. So he, draw four. Um, he really has to think about: Pleasant Does he want five. to make yeah. that line of play now? No. I, I or are his chances risk. maybe higher if he you does this? Wait, I guess. I he have waits to take a risk. one turn. Uh, so if he waits one important. turn, he also and runs think, the yeah, risk of being okay. stamped by Pedro. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> really nice. So I mean, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I now I um, extra turn number one. Pedro got. Exactly oh yeah, yeah. what he wanted. I wanted to switch just, and um, find a stamp. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he was see. just showing the, the switch, so. This is actually really interesting because he does it because Alessandro is now a little bit tilted uh, since Pedro showed the top deck. This is a little bit of a disrespect move if you show that you got it from top of your deck <laughs> and you didn't already have it in your hand. It doesn't matter. But it makes people a little more angry, so a lot of people do this on purpose. They're like, ah, here, I, I, I got lucky and drew <laughs> this. I didn't already have it. But that was why Pedro, I think he didn't meant it as a bad way, so he showed him. <laughs> so okay, I, I had a switch we'll anyway, so I could have Stella so Witch, fair, so right? it didn't yeah. really matter too much. It's fair. Um, yeah. yeah, this is why he, like, why he showed a switch, which usually you would never do. Like, you never show your opponent, especially if you play a lock deck, <laughs> any part of your hand. But in this certain sit situation, he knows it doesn't matter, so he just wants to be nice about it and uh, reveals it. So yeah, we see the recent stamp coming down. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And Can now Alessandro needs Pokemon stamp I really and Articuno. So yeah, PGO, like we said, he had the, he, the better chances he had is just wait one turn and then you stamp Articuno now. But yeah, the reset stamp was something. Uh, that was why he took so much time thinking about it last turn. Like, how do I do it now? Do I do it next turn? And he was really uh, not sure uh, which was the better play but yeah he already attached the water energy to the Pidgey Pidgeotto so if he only needs the Articuno now to get the GX attack and the reset stamp but one of his Pidgeottos will go down so he will ac have access to one less air mail and like by that he will have access to one less card um, or to see two less cards from his deck so yeah the, the chance of uh, him getting the combo this turn again is really low since also there's one Articuno and one reset stamp in his prize cards. Yeah, so the recycle energy goes back to the head and then the Pidgeotto goes to the discard pile. Yeah, and now Alessandro has to use Articuno reset stamp or just Articuno, I guess. If oh, he I think no, it's a poker gear. Yeah, he plays every card in gold, so <laughs> it's kind uh, of tough to see. But oh, it's yeah, like he has sorry, sorry, really <laughs> blinged out. Just to check, really sorry. Nice. No yeah, so okay. Pedro was like, why do you have so many hand cards? Uh, Sandra was like, yeah, re recycle energy, yeah, recycle energy. So yeah, I'm thinking yes. the this yeah, attack. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, these need to be, the energy needs to be attached, but I think they're on the ADP, well, I don't know. 
Um, okay. So you see, Does one metal going to the ADP. Maybe. Hum, hum, I, hum, yeah, hum, you hum. have no time to go for giraffe rig anyway hum, in this hum, game, hum. so. I don't just know. Attach yeah. it. You know? I have one armor out. They're discussing yeah, something. No, I, don't know. Know. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, what's going on? Behind. You're I a custom catcher, me. <laughs> okay, let's not make any assumptions so here. here. Um, Pedro and didn't take prize cards yet, so maybe yeah, he um, also needs to take his prize Alessandro cards. kind of drew nah, a card. Nah, but the GX, right? I want the GX, yeah. And Pedro's now considering where to attach because um, for ultimate ray you can attach them in any way you like. So yes, but I don't. Yeah, does it really matter, right? Yeah. Okay, and then Pedro takes yeah, two of his prize I, cards. Yeah, I think so too. It does not really make a difference. Yeah, oh, and now Alessandro goes for the reset stamp. Let's see. If he can't has get the a the uh, maybe a double custom if catcher he gets or the or the one of the I need the, the Articuno. So this the is a very important turn. Airmail twice. I can't see it. <laughs> and oh, no he Articuno. didn't get it. He didn't nope. get it off the off the airmail. Um, but maybe there's something else he can do. Maybe double custom catcher. Or yeah, something double else? custom catcher. The draft break. Oh, okay. So he still has some ways of drawing cards. Um, we see a Mars. Yes. Oh, he got the fan club, so he can search for the article. Oh, very, very nice, yeah. So, uh, yeah, he just you leaves the chain <laughs> search there, got the fan club, so but he has everything he yes. needs for the potential. The chip chip. Pedro of still has a chance to get a switching card, right? Yeah, true, yeah. So he, has, um, yeah he has the top deck and the card that's still left on his hand. If Alessandro gets the second Mars, oh no, it, is it it? Yeah, yeah oh, it's the second oh Mars. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So <laughs> let's see, if, if he also has a uh, Ice Axe, that would be It was a good slam for you. Yeah, if he also has an Ice Axe, then it's probably... Like, like no, he because needs you find to... The stamp, the still needs card. to Articuno, right? Yeah, true, so but he has a fan club, right? Just have one. Yeah, he can either a Mar play, second play no, the second Mars or play the fan club for the Articuno, so it's kind of tough Fair. which one uh, you would choose. Oh, sure, yeah. That's right, but he definitely needs to play the. Yeah, he needs to play. He the needs fan club, to play yeah. the fan club. Yeah, no. I guess. If you don't have like something like double custom catcher. <laughs> it's probably yeah, that's probably. Yeah, he best cannot play another lieutenant yeah. search to add more supporter card to this number because it's only always a three, so always two basically, um, two more after lieutenant search. Yeah, and you know he's thinking about it like. Yeah, that's anyway, uh, that's a big decision. If you he need to because he knows, yeah. so now. But this is uh, just a game of chances because he knows if, I leave you if he draws the Articuno now, he has a lot higher chance of Pedro yeah, not getting the switching card. But if he doesn't get the Articuno now, he loses. So he needs to make a trade off here. So if I, play yeah, I, I think, I think he also I think has it's double it's custom really custom It's really unlikely right? for him to draw. Yep. Uh, like if he has double custom catcher in hand, that's a different no story. But if he doesn't, has it. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know, but if he doesn't, then it's definitely too unlikely to go for the Articuno. Because yeah, Pedro has yeah, a lot of switching card options here. and drawing the Articuno is you. like, <laughs> I don't know how many deck cards are left, but I would say like 25. So yeah, you, see him, you, see, you see Alessandro just debating what, what is the, uh, like the, the play with the highest chances of working out. Yes, as you said, it's just a game of math. Yeah, this but his, his chance of drawing an Articuno is a oh. he actually goes for the second Mars. It's okay. about one out of 12. <gasps> yeah, Pedro actually had the Mellow and Lana in hand. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last and card. Alessandro did not draw the Articuno, but he okay, yes, it does some cover double custom catcher, so I think it made a lot of sense to go for the Mars. Yes. Um, yes. Because yeah, th he and still had that extra option to add on the chance. Show me the true power of Pedro Torres. So, Pedro needs. Oh! oh! <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Good job. Oh well played. <laughs> so Actually, yes. Pedro wins on the last so turn of time oh due to top taking the switch there. after being put down to zero cards in hand. Yeah, I'm Such very, yeah. <laughs> very sorry for everyone uh, <laughs> listening with headphones. Uh, I'm sorry. But that was crazy. Yeah, that was really, really so nice. So much going on. Um, <laughs> like it's you, like a stall matchup is usually very calm atmosphere. You're. Um, yeah. Thinking a lot, you have to trade off a lot of stuff. You have to think, mm -hmm. oh, maybe my opponent gets that, maybe he gets that, and we were exactly in that like kind of mindset. Like, oh, if he has good chance if he does that, then he has better chances for that. And then Pedro, yeah, he, he got just rips he the switch off the top. Very nice. Oh boy.
But yeah, so you know, it didn't matter, right? Like, even yeah. if you got the Articuno, you would have still lost. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, mm, what a game. I really liked it. But also, you yeah. saw on the Mars, it was Melo Lana. So yeah, it could have yeah, switched know, anyway. Know, yeah. So it was. Yeah, um, I would. Uh, nothing to add here. See you for <laughs> round number two. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's go into the break. See you soon.